points, and these points are in two dimensions. Okay, and I've chosen these points so that the that the space that is um, has been centered over. Okay, um, and so if I, if I draw these points. Um, draw these points. Um, let's see, we're going to get the first, the x coordinate, the first one is 4 and then 3. So, so this is P1. So four points, right? Yeah, so there are four points. Sorry, when you said that they've been centered already, I don't understand what that means. Does that mean they've been ordered like the, the highest distance, the lowest distance? No, the, if I look at the average of the x coordinate, it's 0. If I look at the average of the y coordinate, uh, it's one of these numbers. This this one is a three. Alright. Yes, the average of the y coordinate is zero. So that's what means that they're been the same. Um, so if you um, right so 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 typically when you do the the so because of how the SVD works, all of these vectors are going to, this is going to act as a rotation, and so it's going to be rotating about the origin. So you're kind of, you're kind of forced to have the zero as being the basis of all your vectors. So you want your data to be centered around this. Hopefully that'll make a little bit more sense in a few minutes. Okay, so this is, so this was, uh, so, so this was P1, P2 is going to be about, um, about here, um, P3, let's see, minus 1, 3, and then P4, let's see, minus 5, minus 2. Does that look right? Okay, and if not, I plot them exactly in the notes, and you can go and look at um, and them. And there's a different example even in the, in the text written notes too, but with the picture I pasted in there. So, um, okay. So now we're gonna we're gonna take this data set and we're going to do the SVD of this. And it'll be a bit painful to write all of, all of this up, um, but I'm gonna do it do it anyways. Um, actually, maybe I won't write up all of you. Um, minus point. 6.2 minus 3, 4.5, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. Let me just, so it's going to be a 4 by 4 matrix, remember? So I'll just write up one row and one column. So this will be. 0 0.0523, 0 0.05, 0 0.06, and 0.78. And then there's there's more stuff in here. Um, the S, this is going to look like um, 8.165 and 2.3074. This is a zero, this is a zero, and these are zeros. And then B is going to look like minus 0 0.8142. Minus 0 0.5, or something like that. Uh, minus 5805 and 0 0.8142. Okay. Um, so most of these numbers won't make, don't, it's hard to get any sense of what these are. but. I'll, I'll try and give some sense. So, um, I mean, 
Okay, so we'll start with this V. What's V going on here? So the one thing you can notice is that so far each of these columns should be uh, is uh, going to be a um, unit vector. That means if you square up all these square each of these terms and add them together, it's going to be one. If you just add them together, it'll be more than one, but Col square column length, right? something. What column length? Column and rows. Right. Okay. So either column or yeah. Yeah. And just one. We just take one at a time, right? Okay. So column or right. So so this column, you square this, square this, square this, and square that, and add those together, it's going to be one. Right. So you should have had to do something like that in the third part of the homework. Right. Um, okay. So. And then for the this other property where the dot product of the two is zero, is that where you take a column? column in a row or two columns? Well, it's good. you're going to take two columns or two rows. Uh, so if you look at this column and you dotted it with this one, you multiply this by this and you add it to this by this. And now this one is negative, this, or this the product here is positive, two negatives. This one's going to be negative. And these two values are the same and these are the same. So they're going to, the, the absolute value of both is going to be the same. And so they're going to cancel. It's also true for if I did it by the rows instead of the columns or vice versa. And that's going to be true of these larger parts as well. Uh, so you, if you look at the larger matrix, it's going to have the same property. And you can look at all the gory details of the decimals and the notes. Um, so, okay, so let's let's start with let's start with V. So it's going to be, V is going to be a um, rotation, and I think there might even be here a flip in there, but so it, what, 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 a, what a rotation is doing um, is you can think of having a unit vector in here, or a, 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 a unit circle in this space, right, so the what does it mean for it to be a unit circle? Any, so assuming I drew it right, any of these um, points, if I drew the vector from the origin to this point, the length is one, right? And so a rotation is taking a point that's on this unit circle, and it's going to, um, so a point that's on here, if I take this point and multiply it by this, um, this, this rotation matrix, it's going to rotate it to someplace else on the unit circle. And in higher dimension, you have a unit sphere, and it moves it to someplace else on the unit sphere. The point of a rotation, or with, with mirror flips, is going to be that it's going to keep the norm of the vector when you multiply it through by this matrix the same. So that, that means that if it starts out with a norm one, it has to stay norm one, so it has to go to someplace else on this unit, on this unit circle with the units here, right? Um, so let's let's look at and what this what this matrix is going to do for this point by um, by looking at these vectors, right? So this first vector, so this is B one, and so this is. Um, well, I actually want to look at V transpose. Um, luckily, V transposes itself, so I'm, in this case, I'm okay. Um, so I'm looking at V transpose, and I look at these, at these vectors here. Um, and so because taking the transpose, it still has the same properties. So it's still going to be orthonormal, the transpose vector. So because, well, because of all these properties I have. Okay, so if I look at these vectors now, V1 is going to be negative 0.8 up by negative 0.5. So it means um, it's going to be about uh, here. So this is V1. And V2. I probably should draw this bigger, huh? Um, so, so 
let me draw it here and then I'll redraw it bigger because this calculates scale of the points here. But then V2 is going to be um, negative 0.5 and positive 0.8. So it's going to be up here. So this is V2. Okay, so let me draw this larger. something and minus 0.5, right? And then, so, so this is V1, and then V2 is orthogonal to this, so this is V2, and I get about 0.8 and minus 0.5. Did I do that right? Okay. So now, if I took my point here, x. Now because of this property, it has this basis, it means now I can rewrite x in terms of the basis of these vectors. So, so I want to write x as equal to um, uh, this, this thing where I do alpha i uh, times v of i, right? Where I use these vectors. And I can say that um, x along this vector, this alpha 1, alpha 1 is going to be something negative, right? It's going to be about a negative 0.8 or, or um, something like that. Um, and alpha 2, because I'm, I can extend it. Okay, so then alpha, alpha 2 is going to be this projection this, this projection onto V2, so it's the projection onto V1. The projection onto V2 is going to be about, let's say, 0.6. Um, um, so this would be positive 0.6, and this is negative 0.1. Okay, so now, what does this mean? It means that I can write a new basis here. This is still a distance one. Uh, those balls should be the same size. Um, and then this point x, I can now write it in this basis. The uh, a1 is, is, is a negative um, 0 0.8, so that's up here. Um, a1 is, this is alpha 1, is along v1 this much. a2 is positive 0.6, so it's going to be about, um, this is going to be alpha 2. And so I'm going to get a point right here, which is now on this, on this, uh, still on this unit vector, but in this new basis, right? So I've, I've transformed this ba basis. And this, this transformation is done by this vector V transpose. So that's what it's doing. It's rotating every point in this space. If I picked another point Y, say Y was here, right? Y will end up down here somewhere. Right, so this is a transformation of this. This is how you can think of it. So in higher dimensions, it's doing the same thing. It's going from 
a point on the unit on the unit sphere is going to go to another point on the unit sphere, and this is going to be consistent. So it this, so it rotated and then reflected. Yeah. So I, I think I did a reflection in here as well. Okay. Okay. So this is this is this is kind of cool. Um, all right. So now now remember that. Let's see. Keep in mind that I had p is equal to. Um, U S D transpose. So if I took, so I multiplied P by a matrix X is the same as U D transpose X. So what I've accomplished here is I've done this, this first part. I've, I've done X times V transpose, and what that did to, to, this, to the, uh, the point X is it rotated in the space. If the norm was larger, it was not a a unit vector was on a it, it was a it was a vector of like two. The length of it here is still two. It's same here. It's just further out. If this was further out, this one's just further out. Okay. So the, the next part here is going to be multiplying the output of here by s. Okay. And s was this diagonal matrix. So this s is going to be really easy. Um, the, the S, I wrote it this small for, for a reason, so then, so I went from a small, so this is now V1 and V2, and my point X here is now a point, uh, Over, over here somewhere. So, you know, this is the next prime. Okay. Um, so, so, so now I'm multiplying what here by uh, by s, which is this diagonal matrix. And let's just worry about this top part of it. That'll make sense. And so it says, i it's this s is going to be a stretching factor. So what it's going to do is it's going to stretch the v coordinate by this value of eight. And the and the v two the v one coordinate by eight and the v two coordinate by by two point three. So what's going to happen is that this red uh, ball is now going to be this ellipse. Where this is going to hit. So this is hitting up here, at this point is is the 2.3, and at this point it should be nice and symmetric here. Right, and th th this point right here is out at 8.16. So what it's doing to this point x prime is it's pushing x prime out. Um, so it's 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 uh, it's x coordinate which used was uh, before this was going to be uh, point, point 0.6 I think it was or was it this was a uh, 0.6 and this is going to be point 0.6 times 8 which is going to be about out here and this point 0.8 is going to be times 2.3 it's going to be pushed up here so I've 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 scaled this out I've stretched it along a certain way. so that's what's happening with this s v transpose x I've gone from a point here, and I've come to this stretch point out here. Okay, um, so here's where, and then we have this one last step here where we're now taking this point x and we're, um, we're multiplying this by u. So, the first thing you need to understand is that, you know, I only told you about the top half of this, this matrix X. There are also these bottom coordinates. So what this is saying is that this point out here is not really in two-dimensional space anymore. It's actually in a three. It's actually in a four-dimensional space. There are two more vectors: one coming out here, and one maybe that's drifting over time or something wacky like that. So 
four dimension is a little bit hard to think about, but there are, there are two more dimensions, but this point has a zero coordinate in those dimensions. So we don't really need to worry about this. So there are other dimensions here, but I still represent this point correctly, um, up to my ability to draw um, these ellipses. Um, so, so we actually have a four dimensional point here. And now we're applying another one of these um, one of these um, uh, 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 one of these uh, um, matrices, which is 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 orthogonal, so it's doing this rotation in maybe a mirror field, right? So we're somehow we're in a four dimensional space, and we're rotating to within this four dimensional space, and so because. This is orthogonal, it's no, not changing the norm anymore. This, the norm of this point is now fixed. So the norm transformation was entirely controlled by this. This is not changing the norm of the vector, and neither is, is this one. This one is controlling the norm, and then this is, I'm rotating somehow out into a four dimensional space. Okay, so, so what does this four dimensional space mean? Okay, well, the four corresponds to the number of points that I have, right? So I'm somehow representing it, and I'm giving it, um, I'm somehow giving it this um, new basis, right? I wrote this basis out for the, this, this V, which these corresponded with these, um, these, these dimensions. So I had two dimensions, but I have four points, so the basis, each element of the basis corresponds with one of the points. Um, so, so then I'm basically writing it as um, some combination of the points. Um, so I'm transforming this point into the space of, of the points is what's going on. And so if you think of multiplying a vector by this matrix, you're thinking somehow going from the dimension of that the points are in to a representation described by uh, their correlation of course, um, correlation may or may not be the right word, with, with each of the points that the data set has. And if instead you're looking at the transpose of this matrix, you can go backwards, uh, backwards the other way, well, or at least, at least the inverse of it. Um, you can transfer back the other way from something in the space of the points to something in the space of the dimensions. So that's a little bit hard to visualize. If there's some drawing I, I link to that did it with three points, you can kind of see your rotation into three spaces in some drawing, but I'm not going to try and do that. Yeah. So the the V transpose and the U are, are these these are essentially rotation matrices. So there's also this mirror flip thing, um, hiding in there, right? But I'm going, so let's say I do this again with another point Y, right? Some point here Y. So let's, let's do this experiment again. So the V1 coordinate is now basically going to be negative 0.9, you know, or point, point 0.98. And the V2 coordinate is going to be very small. It's going to be about 0.1. Right, so y is going to be here. So, or this is the y, and this is x prime. Right, so they're still next to each other. Let's say I did another point z over here. So the the x, the the v1 coordinate along here is going to be negative 0.9, about again. And but now the v2 coordinate is going to be negative 0.2. So it's going to be somewhere down here. So these points are kind of, they're keeping their, their position. They're just, they're, there's been a flip and then a rotation. But I think that is not rotation. Although the part of the plane that the points are located is changing, but this change does not come from the rotation. Because, because at that shape, the positive direction of V1 is that direction, right? But in this shape, you have to change the positive direction of v1, right? Well, uh, so I've rotated 
if I took a point exacting on B1, that there's some confusion because of the mirror flip in here as well. May should have come up with an example without the mirror flip. But um, so I've um, so a plane on B1 is going to wind up here. So it's going to be pulled um, pulled up to here and then flipped over. Right. So right. two steps. So the rotation and then the mirror. Yeah. Um, okay, so this, so let me draw another example with that. That, that doesn't have a, have a mirror flip in it, right? So if, if I did, um, so, so I started out here, and now, let's see, B, this is D1, and this is D2, right? Then I'm going to have this new basis over here where B1 and B2, so now a point, point X here is, is going to is, is going to wind up, it's about halfway here, it's going to wind up about X prime, right? A point here is going to wind up Y prime. So I've, now I've done a rotation like this. A point right on B1 is going to get mapped right here. So that makes sense? Yeah, so then, yeah. So if you take the, if you take the, the, the L2 norm of the matrix, if it's, it's either going to be plus 1 or minus 1. And if it's plus 1, it's a rotation. If it's minus 1, it uh, has an air flip as well. So there's some properties like that. Okay. Um, all right. So I've I've given you this. I've kind of told you what this matrix operation is doing, but the, the, the original problem was this 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 PCA problem where I wanted to find this line, right? So okay. So how did any of this have to do with this uh, this subspace I started off telling you I was going to? So I guess th this picture is holding this, this information somehow. This, if I look at these points, if I were to find a subspace that went through these four points, it's going to look a lot like this vector v1. And in fact, this vector v1 is exactly the vector I want over here. I use d as my vector there to correspond with these, this v1. So it's the vector that turns the line between that corresponds with all those points. Yeah, right. So the, the V1 is going to be is going to tell me the line that is going to I took down an erase my cost function, but it's going to minimize the cost of these sum of these squared projections. It's going to do that. If I were in say three space and I wanted a plane, like a two-dimensional plane. That, and I want to minimize the cost of some of the squared projections on that, then I'm going to take V1 and V2 and ignore, you know, V3, right? Um, so I, I just need to take, you know, the top ones of these, um, these are going to be the, um, the right singular vectors are going to tell me this information. They're going to tell me this subspace, which is best describes the data. Okay, so, so, so that, that seems great. I do this SVD in MATLAB, and I get out this, uh, this, this vector V, and then I just look at the columns, and this tells me the subspace. Um, and, you know, in, in fact, in, in order to do the projection onto the subspace, I've, I've got this basis tells me how to do this, right? I take the dot product with, this, uh, with each of the vectors, and this tells me AI, right? This is the, the, the if, if, if I look at this inside of the subspace. Now this V, you know, I used it, I drew this picture where this VI is this basis, right? But really I want the projection of the point onto V1. And so if I took the point X and I project onto V1 and I'm ignoring V2, then 
then this point right here is going to be um, x dot v1, um, which is this is this is now a scalar, and I multiply this by v1, which is a vector that lives in my original two-dimensional space, and this gives me this projection point, right? So I can tell this, and then if I if I want to know the length of this residual, I take this value and I can subtract out x, and this value is this is this term, which is, um, so, so what's left, the cost, the length of the projection, is known as the residual. So, so I'm, I'm pulling this out as well right here. And so these are all very simple operations. Um, okay, so, so that's great. So now what is this S matrix telling me? It's scaling or something. Right, so this, is, so this was the stretch I was doing with this matrix. Um, but this number 8, right, what is this number 8 telling me about uh, V1? It's, it's, what it's telling me is how much essentially mass there is along V1. This is, this is kind of like the, well, the squared, so I like to think of this as mass. Is the squared mass of the matrix. Uh, so these were just rotations and they weren't changing the norms of any vector. So all the norm changing is right in here. Um, so if you look at P, um, so it, I told you how to take a norm of a, of a, um, um, the norm of a, of, of a vector. You can take the norm of a matrix too. So the two norm is going to be um, it's going to be the, the sum of uh, i equals one to you, you can do it either way i equals one to n of the norms of of pi or I can do this. So it's going to be the two norms here. By the way, it's going to be the square root of these. OK, so I'm, it's possible I'm getting this wrong. There's something called a Frobenius norm, which is where you're, you're squaring everything and then taking a big square root of all components. And this is different, but I'm worried I'm screwing this up. But the, yeah, the L2 norm, sorry, OK, the, the, the two norm is just, Is the sum of these guys squared? It's got to be right. The squared two norms. Okay, so no. Oh, so that's just the two norm. Okay, so I'm the, okay, so I'm thinking of the of of the Frobenius norm. Okay, so then, um, um, so then the Frobenius norm is is going to be this, which is is so it, so so which is which is also equal to um, doesn't sum up all the components of all the points, uh, you square each of these, and then you take the square root. So this is kind of telling you how much mass is, is, is in the matrix. And the Frobenius norm of, of S is, is going to be the same as P. So S is capturing all the mass here. And what this first one is telling you is all the mass that's along the first, um, the first component. And the second one is telling you along the second component. Now these components have to do with these V1 and, and V2 vectors. Right? So what it's saying is that if you, if I took, so if I extended out V1 
be one here and and um, and be two. Um, and then I looked at the squared mass along V1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to project each of these onto these, these vectors and take these lengths and I'm going to square them. And it's going to continue out the back. So I'm going to take these lengths and I'm going to square them and I'm going to add up these squared lengths. And that sum of these squared lengths is going to be this, this value here, this 8. And then if I did it along V2, I look at which is the sum of these residuals on, on, uh, from the projection on the V1, that's going to be this, this squared length. And so it's, it's yep. So for the first one, for 8, you, you project the point onto the vector and then you find the length from there to the origin? Yeah. Okay. Right. So if you remember the, you know, I I do this, I. So th this length is actually easier to calculate than the vector. It's just the depth product. And you get the vector, you multiply again by the, the vector. Right. So it's it's just the dot product of each of the points. The length is the dot product with with the vector. Um, so 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 this value is this sigma one is is going to be the sum of P in the point set of, um, of uh, V1, of the dot product of V1 and P. Uh, yeah. But this length, uh, hold on, is this squared length? This is, this is just the length, so, so I need to spread this. So this sigma 1 is going to be the sum of these, these length squared. And so now there's going to be a cool, and now by, by multiplying, by doing the stretching, I'm, I'm, I'm not changing the, uh, the Frobenius norm of, of this in this decomposition because the u and the v are not 